All right, this is the uh, SOP for uh, EDS instruction on the FEI SEM. Uh, so we're coming straight from uh, doing imaging on the SEM of our tin sample. So we're going to go over to point analysis and we're going to image the area to actually import the picture uh, of where we're going to do our EDS uh, analysis. So our imaging image uh, is coming up and we can look at our input CPS it's around 3000 dead time is 5.7 so we need to make some adjustments to change that. So to increase our uh, input counts per second we need to go back to our uh, control and uh, increase the current. Uh, and if you notice uh, for collect spectrum we do have options to change the time change the amp time. And we see we're right around 3000 CPS. We can see it at the bottom of the graph there. We can always click the collect spectrum button to stop the scan. So off screen, you can't see, uh, I'm on the other uh, PC, uh, changing the current, increasing the current uh, to increase the counts per second rate. So now I'm going to re-image the area, and we can look, we're at about uh, 45,000 counts per second. Still want to get a little bit higher. We're shooting for about 70,000 counts per second when we're doing a spectrum scan, and we'll shoot for about 100,000 counts per second when we're doing mapping. Uh, so now I'm going to go uh, back to the other PC. I uh, need to increase the current one more time until I get, uh, get to the range that we're looking for. So let's change the current again, going to re-image the area. And now we're right about 70,000 counts. It's going to fluctuate a little bit, so it always depend, it's always material dependent. So with the sample, uh, the spots we see, the strips we see are the tin, and then some of the darker areas is going to be uh, carbon. So when it hits the carbon, it's going to drop a little bit lower. When it hits the tin, it's going to increase. Uh, so once we get our counts, uh, just how we want it, we're going to adjust the amp time to get the dead time correct. So the dead time right now, it's we're sitting right around four, and uh, we want to increase that to uh, anywhere between twenty and forty. So optimally, we're shooting for about thirty percent dead time. So we'll switch the switch the amp time, recollect the spectrum. So now we're right around the counts we want, and uh, we're about twenty five percent dead time. And we can notice the green bar at the bottom of the graph. That'll tell you how long the scan uh, is going to take. All right, now we have a completed scan. And uh, now we want to check for peaks uh, and uh, check the background also. So we notice uh, we have a dark blue line, which is our background. We have a light blue line, which is the sum of all the peaks. So if any peaks are above that light blue line, then it hasn't been identified yet. So we can click on the peak, uh, hover over the question mark, and then select the elements uh, that we, th that we uh, want to fit into that. So scrolling down through that list, you can see where the peaks uh, shift, and that is an Illumina peak that we have there. And then this one is going to be a silicon peak. I'm going to magnify over a short range and kind of look at the background and the elements that we have on there. So we can click on uh, the manual background control 
just select anywhere on the graph, and then we can extend out where our background uh, is supposed to be. So I'm going to adjust the background slightly. And once we change our elements, we're going to select our save button to lock in the elements uh, for our report. Uh, to generate the report, we're just going to select the report button. And we can look at our element composition, and then we can also look at the error percentage. So the when I selected silicon, uh, it's about 70% error percentage. That's a little bit too high. So it might, actually, might not actually be a silicon peak that we see there. So if we believe this is not a silicon peak, we can always uh, uh, hit the table elements, unselect silicon, and then uh, save the elements list once again. And we still have a little bit of the background that's off, so I'm going to adjust that a little bit. Because your background should follow your follow the actual background that you have uh, and shouldn't be above or below uh, by too far on your data. So we're going to relook at the elements. Aluminum's a little high. But anything over 10% error, you're really going to want to double check. So let's take a look at the report. So our report's going to give us our uh, image area, and it's also going to give us our data, uh, along with the elemental composition that we have. So now along with that, uh, with point analysis, you can either get an average over the whole area, or you can select individual points. So here I'm going to select a couple points, uh, one directly on a tin sphere, uh, second point is uh, looks like it's on some kind of contaminant along with that third box. Uh, they look like two contamination areas. So it's going to go sequentially. Um, to from point one two and then area three, uh, it'll do. We had to set uh, scan time for thirty seconds, so it will spend thirty seconds at each one of those points or areas. So we can already see on the contamination pot or point, it's uh, picking up some uh, calcium, sodium, and that should not be on the sample.
so now the scan's complete, I can go ahead and look over the data and uh, make sure the processing uh, fits the background and the peaks correctly. So moving on to the second one, so there's a lot of different elements that this one has that the first one didn't. So we're going to go ahead and look through to see what fits uh, the data the best. So it looks like an alumina peak, that looks like a silicon peak. So once we selected all of our elements, we're going to save, uh, lock the elements in place. And let's move on to the third area. This is a lot of the similar uh, elements as the uh, second spot. So the other option is to actually pull up the uh, periodic table and hover over any of the elements and it'll show you where the peak line should be. So this time, instead of clicking on the peaks like we did in the last example, we're just going to click on the elements on the table and try to fit the data that way. Once again, we'll save. So now to get all the areas on a single report, you're going to have to go back uh, into your project content and double click on the area itself. Uh, then you'll see the boxes at the bottom of the graph uh, signifying each spot or area that you took. And But now all those will show up on the report. So you have all the positions that you took the scan, we'll have the original full scan that we did, and then the small area that we did. They'll all be labeled up at the top uh, of the graphs as well, of where, they, where the positions they came from. So now we're going to move on to a line scan. This typically, if you're looking at interfaces or just a change of material on a surface, it's going to take um, <clears throat> a certain number of selected points uh, within that line that you draw. Uh, you can change your resolution, uh, the number of points, uh, how many frames you want to do, dwell time, and the amp time. We set it up to have the correct amp time on there, so we're going to leave it uh, alone. Now how this presents, uh, it presents the elements on the line as a function of uh, the placement of where it is. So we're going to open that back up and we can see our elements are in different colors uh, and the distance along the line that we took the scan from. So we have our image, uh, overlaid on the image uh, is going to be the graph and then just the graph, the plot by itself uh, below the image. And again, you can manipulate uh, elements uh, just like we did in the previous example. So over here, there are a couple functions that we can use over here. Uh, I'm not going to change most of these. Uh, but if you wanted to change uh, amp time, there is a section over here. It's easiest done really in the point analysis mode. So you could just do a quick check uh, by running a scan 
Uh, but if you wanted to change the amp time, this is where you're going to do it over here under Spectrum Collection. Uh, you can also change the clock here as well. Then options for some mapping, drift correction, specimen stage, so on and so forth. And then as users, you won't have to use some of these. So now we're going to go and review uh, mapping. So now we select our mapping uh, and we're collecting. So now we're going to go and review uh, mapping. So now we select our mapping uh, and we're collect the map. And it will tell you a time, how long it's going to take. Uh, this is just set for two frames as an example, but you're probably going to have to want to run more frames uh, than this. So now it's collecting and what we're seeing now is a phase identification map. So it'll try to create phases between the elements that it finds uh, in the scan and populate it with this. So now we're going to switch over to our overlay. So this is actually the elemental overlay on top of the picture. Uh, so the green spots is uh, identified as tin, but the purple spots are going to be carbon. And we'll click finish on that. And if we want to review, we can open up a project contact or content, uh, click on the live map that we just took. And we can do any manipulation of the elements that we need to do. So we're going to check the uh, background and the peaks and uh, we're going to throw in put back in our aluminum and then save that element now it's different here it just doesn't automatically do it we do have to rebuild the map uh, so we're going to add our element to the rebuild and it's going to uh, scan over this uh, once a little bit slower the second time will be real quick uh, to, to replace uh, to reposition our elements and those colors that we changed So now we're going to take a look at the report. And now it's going to give us our phase map, uh, our image of the area that we're just taking. And then it'll do the overlays of the elements uh, according to their positions with that image that we took. And at the very bottom, it's going to give us our sum spectrum and uh, the elements and also phase identification for those.